Hi everyone, it's the Book Cougars, two middle-aged women on the hunt for a good read. I'm Emily. And I'm Chris. We're holding our current read-along mm -hmm. for second quarter 2023. The reading list. And yes, you see three copies before you because we have a giveaway copy for one lucky newsletter subscriber. And we're going to give away a copy on March 29th, which is Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't currently a newsletter subscriber, go to bookcougars.com and you can become one. Mm -hmm. And it's totally free and we only send one email a month. So, yeah. So this is our next read along, the reading list. Really looking forward to this one. Sarah Nisha Adams is the author and we've been hearing great things about it. Yes. Some books change your life forever is what it says at the bottom yeah we thought we would read the first paragraph yeah let's do book. that all right this is from you, the prologue okay would you like me to read it sure. would you like to read it whatever what do you want to read it sure okay prologue the reading list 2017 the doors are new automatic open fancy that has changed since aiden was here last the first thing he notices are the sparse rows of books. When he'd been younger, smaller, the shelves seemed to never end, teeming with books of all shapes and sizes. Even when he'd been a teenager, working here over his summer holidays, this place had been a sanctuary for him. And though he'd never have admitted it to his friends, he'd love getting lost between the stacks and stacks of reference books. Maybe he is just looking back with rose-tinted spectacles, imagining some kind of magical bookish wonderland that has never really existed. But now, at 22, no longer a boy, but a man, here he is again, looking for a place to hide from the world, his friends, his family. Mm. Mm. I can relate good. to that. And now I'm going to read the last paragraph. What the what? <laughs> joking. <laughs> I was like, Chris! <laughs> we never do things like that. We do know some people read the last chapter. I find it personally horrifying, but yeah. you know, whatever works for well, you. Well, and I don't think it works though. Like, cause sometimes you don't, it doesn't really tell you the ending. Like you don't know who's lived, who's died, yeah. how they died, if they died, if there's death. I don't know. Yeah. I, it works for some people. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we thank you, William yes. Morrow. We have an extra copy. Join the newsletter. And join our read-along. Yes. Send us an email, bookcougars at gmail.com, if you'd like to be included in the Zoom conversation. Or you can always converse with us on Goodreads. We have a discussion thread. Or you can just shoot us an email if you want to talk with us uh, more privately or share your thoughts that way. We are going to be talking to the author as yeah. well. So definitely Super share your thoughts. excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and ask questions. Like, if you have questions... For the author, about the novel, about her writing life, um, shoot us those questions as well. The reading list. All right. All right. So we're, oh. We also, we have one other giveaway we want to, oh, you want to talk about the Cubs. It's the Cubs opener. This week. Thursday. Yeah. So I just have to uh, say, good luck, Cubs. No Cubs. She's, you know, from Chicago. I, yeah. Well, you know. I grew up with them. They're my guys, but you know, it's not like I follow it religiously. I don't watch games on TV. Oh, you don't? I pay attention to the scores though. Okay. I guess. You just cut to the chase. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, I used to love laying around when I was younger watching baseball, but I don't as much anymore. Anyway. The games take forever. Back to my books. opinion. But yes. anyway. <laughs> the Hidden Life of Astor Kelly by Catherine A. Sherbrooke is our Patreon giveaway. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to become a patron of the Book Cougars podcast, you can do that at Book Cougars. I'm sorry, it's patreon.com slash Book Cougars. All of this is available on our website. Yeah. And, and this, we got this really beautiful finished copy from Pegasus Books. This really cool bookmark. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Very sweet. And that will be drawn on April 15th. We do the Patreon giveaway every 15th of the month. Right. Just letting you know a little bit ahead of time what it is. And I really enjoyed her previous novel, um, Leaving Coy's Hill. It was the one that was about um, Lucy Stone, suffragette. Um, a novel, a novel is a fictionalization, a fictional representation of her life, but really well done. 
Right. And this one is inspired by a mystery in Catherine Sherbrooke's own family, but it too is a work of fiction. Mm. So I'm really curious about that. I think it has a beautiful cover too. Probably. Yeah. Intriguing. So what are you reading now? I am currently reading Chase of the Wild Goose. Great cover. By Mary Gordon. Um, this is a new edition by Lurid Editions. The novel was originally published in 1936, I believe, and um, Lurid is just putting out this edition. Their covers are great, as you can yeah. see. They're very uh, fuchsia, and they really stand out on the shelf or um, wherever you have them. And this is a true story. It's a novel, but it's based on the true story of the ladies of Langolin, who were two upper-class Irish women who neither one of them wanted to marry, uh, and that was the expectation. You know, there was a lot of in marrying for political gain and monetary connections and things like that. And they uh, met and had some time together, fell in love, and eventually leave Ireland and find a home together in Wales. Mm -hmm. And they were very famous during their own lifetimes. This is like late 1700s when they first meet. Okay. So... And the edition that was put out in 1936 was by Hogarth Press, which was Virginia Woolf's and her husband's press. So mm -hmm. that's pretty which cool. We learned a lot more about when we went to that Virginia Woolf exhibit at the New York Public Library. Right. Yeah, yeah, which is very cool. How about you? I'm reading My Dearest Darling by Lisa Franco, and she's a local author in Connecticut. She sent us a copy of this book. She was in Cape Cod at a vintage store and came across a bundle of 150 love letters mm -hmm. written between a man and a woman during World War II. He was on a Navy ship. And most of the letters that remained were his letters written to his wife. Um, not that she didn't write him back, but those weren't the letters that happened to be in the pile. So she hired a genealogist to track the family down. That's so cool. The woman was still alive. Sadly, her husband had passed away, but she met her, got permission from the family, and wrote this book that's really just, she shares a little bit of information about what's going on at the time um, historically, yeah. but then has or the letters, the, not the actual official letters. She has some pictures of them, like what the cool. letter looked like and what they looked like. And you get some fun information, like she's actually wearing these gloves in this picture because she had a bad case of poison ivy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so wow. She had to wear gloves to the fancy <laughs> naval uh, dance, you know. So you think, oh, so elegant. Right. They looked so great back then. And then <laughs> but she was like, <laughs> yeah. ow. But Chris, there's a really fun part that I wanted to tell you about where um, they're reading the book Forever Amber. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> Which historically in Chris's family, her parents read that book yes, together, right? My, I was almost named Amber because my parents liked right. that novel so much. It's a big chunkster. And uh, apparently a lot of couples read it because it was a little risque back right. then. Yeah. yeah. As our, his letters are so sweet. It was a really rainy day here in Guilford yesterday. And um, the gentleman that caller and I were sitting on the couch side by side reading all day. And I kept reading him these letters because they're just so adoring, mm. so adoring. And I have finished. And, and I, one of the things I was curious about is when they were living together again, if they continue to love each other <laughs> as much as they way. did from a distance and the answer is yes and they were married for over 60 years so That's great yeah really lovely lovely book awesome now the last thing we have a little show and tell for you all on episode 178 which is the one that's coming out this tuesday we had the good fortune to interview um jennifer Savron kelly author of end papers and she one of the scenes in the book we talk about is when her character is using a bone folder. Um, so we thought we'd show you what bone folders look like. Um, they are traditionally made of bone. Which this one actually yeah, is. That one's bone and this one is plastic. But these were used to fold mm. paper. You know, paper used to be made in big sheets um, and it's kind of still is and depending on how you order it, I guess. Um, but artists and book binders use it to fold the sheets 
and bone was used because it wouldn't mark the paper. Um, and then it has the point for, you know, controlling things a little bit better. So we just wanted to show you what a bone folder looks like in case you hadn't seen one before. And we had a lovely time talking to Jen. Yes. Highly recommend this book. Yeah. And papers it's out now and, uh, love it so much. So, and episode 178 will drop on this Tuesday. Tuesday the 28th. We had a lot of date boo-boos in this video. Yeah, so go Cubs and happy reading. <laughs> happy reading, everybody. Do you have a team? No. No. I mean, the Red, the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. And I, when I was a kid growing up, if you got, at, for every A you got on your report card at the end of the year, you could get, like, a ticket to go see the oh, Reds. Oh, wow. Which was really fun. Yeah. yeah. But um, when my son played baseball, I found it exhausting because there's no definite beginning and end whereas like with basketball and soccer there's more so kind of turned me off from baseball all those games but well I, I, I still love you <laughs> <laughs> on a happy note we'll say bye happy reading <laughs>